Welcome to episode 4. Questions and answers are based on Black Tiger Shrimp Pinaeus Monodon Hatchery Operations using Enhanced Biosecurity Measures Manual. Choose the best answer. Why are spawning tanks covered individually with black nets and sacks? A. To prevent sunlight exposure. B. To keep the temperature low. C. To enhance water circulation. D. To prevent cross-contamination between tanks. Why are spawning tanks covered individually with black nets and sacks? D. To prevent cross-contamination between tanks. Individual covering prevents cross-contamination and maintains the isolation of each spawning tank. Who will be allowed to enter the hatchery facility and handle the stocks? A. Visitors and tourists. B. Authorized staff or hatchery personnel. C. Breedstock suppliers. D. Local community members. Who will be allowed to enter the hatchery facility and handle the stocks? B. Authorized staff or hatchery personnel. Only authorized staff or hatchery personnel are allowed to enter and handle the stocks to ensure biosecurity. What is the purpose of using a one-way in and out scheme for entrance and exit? A. To improve traffic flow within the hatchery. B. To reduce the risk of contamination. C. To save time for personnel. D. To encourage visitors to enter the hatchery. What is the purpose of using a one-way in and out scheme for entrance and exit? B. To reduce the risk of contamination. The one-way in and out scheme minimizes the risk of cross-contamination by controlling the flow of personnel. What is the recommended chlorine concentration for tank disinfection? A. 100 ppm. B. 150 ppm. C. 200 ppm. D. 250 ppm. What is the recommended chlorine concentration for tank disinfection? C. 200 parts per million. Tanks are disinfected by preparing 200 parts per million of chlorine solution, which is splashed into the tanks and reservoir to eliminate pathogens. How long should tanks be left after disinfection before rinsing with fresh water? A. 1 day. B. 2 days. C. 3 days. D. 4 days. How long should tanks be left after disinfection before rinsing with fresh water? C. 3 days. Tanks are left for at least 3 days after disinfection before being rinsed with fresh water to ensure thorough disinfection. What type of seawater will be used for indoor culture of diatoms? A. Non-treated seawater. B. UV sterilized seawater. C. Chlorinated seawater. D. Brackish water. What type of seawater will be used for interculture of at diatoms? B. UV sterilized seawater. UV sterilized seawater is used for interculture of diatoms to ensure a sterile environment for diatom growth. Which medium is used as a fertilizer for culturing diatoms? A. TMRL or Tungkang Marine Research Laboratory medium. B. Seawater. C. Chlorine solution. D. Sodium hypochlorite. Which medium is used as a fertilizer for culturing diatoms? A. Tungkang Marine Research Laboratory medium. The fertilizer that will be used for diatoms is the TMRL or the Tungkang Marine Research Laboratory medium. It is composed of sodium nitrate, disodium phosphate, ferric chloride, and disodium silicate and also the F medium, composed of ETA, trace metals, vitamin stock, disodium phosphate, ferric chloride, and disodium silicate. Which types of fertilizers will be used for diatom culture and how are they prepared? A. Urea and ammonium phosphate, completely dissolved in UV sterilized seawater. B. Sodium hypochlorite and ammonium nitrate, mixed with fresh water. C. Urea and ammonium phosphate completely dissolve in a pail of fresh water. D. Sodium hypochlorite and potassium chloride mixed with UV sterilized seawater. Which types of fertilizers will be used for diatom culture and how are they prepared? 
see urea and ammonium phosphate completely dissolve in a pail of fresh water. So for outdoor culture and harvest of diatoms or the Skeletonema species, two types of fertilizers are used, the urea 4600 and ammonium phosphate 1620. Completely dissolve urea 75 grams and ammonium phosphate 20 grams in a pail of fresh water prior to application. How long should Artemia cysts be incubated in 250 liter incubation tank for hatching? A6 hours, B12 hours, C18 hours, D24 hours. How long should Artemia cysts be incubated in a 250 liter incubation tank for hatching? D24 hours. Artemia cysts should be incubated in a 250 liter tank with UV sterilized seawater and aeration for 24 hours for hatching. What is being done to disinfect Artemia cysts before incubation? A. Using 20 ppm sodium hypochlorite for 15 minutes. B. Using chlorinated water for 30 minutes. C. Rinsed with running UV sterilized seawater for an hour. D. Artemia cysts are not subjected to disinfection. What is being done to disinfect Artemia cysts before incubation? A. Using 20 ppm sodium hypochlorite for 15 minutes. In Artemia culture, the cysts are disinfected with 20 ppm sodium hypochlorite for 15 minutes. The cysts are then rinsed with running UV treated seawater until the smell of sodium hypochlorite disappears prior to incubation. What should be done to separate unhatched Artemia cysts from Artemia niploi prior to harvest? A. Add more UV sterilized seawater to the tank. B. Open the outlet of the tank fully. C. Remove aeration and cover the top portion of the tank for at least 30 minutes. D. Shake the tank vigorously. What should be done to separate unhatched Artemia cysts from Artemia niploi prior to harvest? C. To separate unhatched Artemia cysts from niploi, aeration is removed and the top portion of the tank is covered for at least 30 minutes. What disinfectant is used to disinfect the Pinaeus monodon spawners after acclimatization when delivered from the source to the spawner or broodstock facility? A. Sodium hypochlorite. B. Povidone iodine. C. Hydrogen peroxide. D. Alcohol. What disinfectant is used to disinfect the Pinaeus monodon spawners after acclimatization when delivered from the source to the spawner or broodstock facility? B. Povidone iodine. How long are the spawners allowed to acclimate when the salinities on both waters have already equalized? A. 30 minutes. B. 1 hour. C. 2 hours. D. Overnight. How long are the spawners allowed to acclimate when the salinities of both waters have already equalized? C2 hours. So in selection and processing of spawners, spinous monodon spawners, will be delivered from the source to the spawner facility or broodstock facility. Upon arrival, the spawners are acclimatized by placing them in white basins with aeration. The salinity inside the basin should be slowly adjusted to equalize with the salinity of the water in the transport bag. When the salinities of both waters have already equalized, the spawners will then be allowed to acclimate for two hours. What is the distinguishing feature of stage 2 early maturing gonadal maturity in female Pinaeus monodon spawners? A. Linear band visible through exoskeleton. B. Diamond-shaped expansion at first abdominal segment. C. Solid dark band from anterior to posterior. D. Completely spent ovaries. What is the distinguishing feature of stage 2 early maturing gonadal maturity in female Pinaeus monodon spawners? A. Linear band visible through exoskeleton. In stage 2, or early maturing, the ovaries can be observed as a linear band through the exoskeleton. 
indicating an increase in size. How do stage 3 ovaries or late maturing ovaries appear upon dissection? A. Colorless strands without eggs. B. Mostly light olive green and with visible clumps of eggs. C. Dark olive green and distended. D. Yellowish and limp. How do stage 3 ovaries appear upon di dissection? B. Mostly light olive green and with visible clumps of eggs. Dissected ovaries are mostly light olive green, firm and granular in texture, and with visible clumps of eggs. When the ovaries are already in stage 3 or late maturing. At what abdominal segment level can a somewhat diamond or butterfly outline be seen in stage 3 late maturing ovaries? A. First abdominal segment. B. Second abdominal segment. C. Thoracic region. D. Posterior abdominal region. At what abdominal segment level can a somewhat diamond or butterfly outline be seen in stage 3 or late maturing ovaries? A. First abdominal segment. In stage 3, a diamond or butterfly outline can be seen at the level of the first abdominal segment. Which stage of gonadal maturity is characterized by ovaries occupying nearly all available space in the body cavity? A. Stage 2, early maturing. B. Stage 3, late maturing. C. Stage 4, mature or ripe. D. Stage 5. Spent. Which stage of gonadal maturity is characterized by ovaries occupying nearly all available space in the body cavity? C. Stage 4. Mature or ripe. What is the purpose of sending spent spawners to a fish health laboratory for PCR tests? A. To determine their size. B. To assess their coloration. C. To evaluate their mating behavior. D. To check for pathogens. What is the purpose of sending spent spawners to a fish health laboratory for PCR tests? Letter D. Spent spawners are sent to PCR tests to detect the presence of pathogens that could potentially affect the nuclei. Ablation is performed through the following ways except for A. Pinching B. Ligation C. Cautery D. Sealing Ablation is performed through the following ways except for D. Sealing So pinching is an incision that is made on the eye with a sharp blade. The contents are squeezed out and eye stock is crushed two to three times to destroy the tissue. This is the preferred method because one person can do it alone, and the eye stock heals even without the use of antibiotics. The external layer or the corneal layer forms the scar tissue in a week's time. In ligation, the eye stock is tied with a piece of string at the base close to the carapace to fall off in a few days. This process needs two persons, one to hold the prawn while another ties the eye stock. In cautery, the eye stock is ablated by squeezing with a pair of red-hot forceps or by using an electric cut cauterizer. This requires a cauterizer which may not be easily available. And another way is cutting. The eye stock is cut off with a pair of sharp scissors about 3 to 5 millimeters from the base. This is inconvenient because it requires additional sealing by cautery. Otherwise, loss of blood from the open cut eye stock may lead to mortality. And that's it for the black tiger shrimp hatchery operations using enhanced biosecurity measures manual.